Praise the Lord. Tonight, there are three areas that the Lord revealed to me in the place of prayer that he is going to be dealing with very seriously. And I want to charge our hearts and then we get straight to the business of the night. Um, number one, please write it down. The first area that the Lord wants to visit by his spirit, and this coincides with the program of God for the nations, even in this end time. I did tell us that the Spirit of God revealed to me, and this is also consistent with Scripture, that before Jesus returns, as we approach the end of the age, there will be a restoration of the mantles, the healing ministry, in a way and a dimension we have never seen. I know that here and there we have seen pockets of healing, and while it will be very uncomfortable, especially for we men of God to acknowledge that we're still at the level of infancy as far as it has to do with the healing ministry. It is true. You just need to be a student of scripture and a student of history and you will come to a very honest conclusion that in as much as God is helping us here and there, we do not come close to the phenomenal demonstrations of the hand of God, especially in the, in the area of healing that have been, has been experienced, you know, in the ages and the years past but we know that God is restoring this grace in the name of Jesus Christ so tonight the Lord is going to be moving as a healer and as a deliverer this is the first area that God wants to deal with why am I telling you so that your faith would be alive and so that you will find comfort knowing that he has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. Let me give you a few scriptures. Psalm 34, please, from verse 18 and 19. Let's walk together, media. We have a number of scriptures to deal with. The Bible says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. 19. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many. In as much as that person is a righteous person, the Bible says it is not unusual for the righteous to be afflicted, but it leaves him with an assurance that the Lord delivered him out of them all. Shout amen. amen. The Lord delivered him out of them all. Number two, Psalm 107. We read it earlier, but we'll read it again. 19 and 20 psalm 107 19 and 20 it says then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses verse 20 it says he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them from their destructions so the word of god sustains within itself the capacity to heal and the capacity to to deliver from destruction in isaiah chapter 53 very popular scripture and verse 5 isaiah 53 and verse 5 the bible says but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities it says the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed apostle peter in expressing this scripture would say by his stripes we were healed that means no matter what the situation is tonight as you are hearing this scripture i'm not just rehearsing a scripture you already read it is a prophetic word to you that you must be uncomfortable with that situation and trust god to step in over your life in the name of jesus christ Amen. hallelujah in isaiah 49 i like this one from verse 24 down to 26 shall the prey be taken from the mighty oh let every devil hear this or the lawful captive delivered is a question 25 it says but thus saith the lord even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered it says for i will contend who contends with them god himself listen hold on don't rush that scripture do you know what it means for god to arise and contend with them that contend with you not with him not with him i will arise and contend with him ah. who can stand against the lord 
No one can, no one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. He said, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save your children. Verse 26. It says, I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all the flesh shall know, listen carefully, that I am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Shout a loud amen. Amen. So God is here tonight to heal and to deliver. To heal and to deliver. To take away pain. To take away bodily afflictions that plague God's people. Spying upon your liberty. I have explained to you the theology behind healing. That God heals to reveal number one, his love. And then number two, his power. But classically speaking, the reason why the healing ministry is very important is because every believer only has the right to one body per lifetime. As much as the Bible reveals to us. Please pay attention. One body per lifetime. Your spirit is only authorized to be hosted in one body within the frame of a lifetime. Hallelujah. That means whatever deteriorates that body is attempting to cut short your life and your days. Are we together? There is a requisite level, a threshold level of health that your body must attain unto for your spirit to be able to live inside it comfortably. When your body is deteriorated beyond that point, your spirit will have to be separated, whether it is the end of your days or not. So every manifestation of sickness disease and infirmity is is a is the administration of death in portions hallelujah and then deliverance why do we need to be delivered i told you that we're not only delivered from spirit influences we are also delivered from conditions are we together now? Yes. There are spirits that tie into conditions and oppress God's people. You can be delivered from spirit influences, but you can be delivered from conditions. The word deliver or deliverance simply means you're being separated from an influence, be it spiritual or a circumstantial influence that impedes your advancement. And impedes the revelation of the glory of God in and through your life. Number two, the second area God is going to be dealing with extensively. And please, I like your heart to be open to receive everything tonight. Is the area of our finances. Isaiah 35 and verse 27. Believe it all in the name of Jesus Christ. 35, 27. Isaiah, help us media, 35, 27, 3, 5, 2, 7. Did I get that right? Let them shout for joy that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually. Let me quote it because of time. The Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Are we together? God hath pleasure. Listen carefully in the prosperity of his servant that means everything that fights your getting blessed is fighting the will of god concerning your life believers please hear me settle it once and for all that it is not antichrist to prosper settle it once and for all that in the face of financial limitations many things will not be in place in your life period whether as an individual whether organizationally speaking are we together? This is a world that is driven by economy. It takes more than the awareness of the will of God to birth his purposes. There is a place in your life where you will need sufficient resources. 
not just resources resources to the degree to which your well-being and the assignment of God needs the Bible says God delighted in the prosperity of his servant Deuteronomy 8 18 says and thou shalt remember but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God it says it is he that giveth the power to get wealth it is God that empowers men to get wealth, to establish his covenant which he swear with your fathers, particularly Abraham. What was the covenant? In thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He made a covenant to Abraham. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that in Galatians 3, I believe verse, verse 29 or so, it says, and if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So in Christ, all of us have become beneficiaries, recipients of that blessing. It was to Abraham and his seed, Paul teaches us, which is Christ. And now because we have been grafted into Christ through redemption, we are partakers of all that is in Christ including the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. So God gives power to prosper. That means it takes power to prosper. It takes power to prosper. In this wicked, evil, and selfish world, it takes power more than value. It takes power to prosper. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. The easiest part of wealth is becoming wealthy. Staying wealthy takes power. It takes more than value. Is someone learning? Psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2. Psalm 127 from verse 1 and 2. Except the Lord builds a house. He says, They labor in vain that build it. That means it will carry a semblance of being built. But the Bible says it is in vain except the lord keeps or watches over a city he said the watchman waketh up but in vain verse 2 it says it is vain for you to rise up early that is not a that is not a bad virtue but it is in vain if god does not support you and to sit up late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow for it is only god that can give his beloved sleep hallelujah we live in a world where people downplay the role that god has to play as far as empowering people is concerned let me tell you economically speaking you don't need to be a christian you don't need to know god you do not even need to acknowledge him once you understand the principles of value and productivity principles of exchange and relationships these are foundational principles from a secular standpoint that govern the availability of financial resources you don't have to be born again but I can tell you there are dimensions because becoming wealthy comes with other luggages too hatred wickedness jealousy battles you have no business fighting are we together now that one now it is not brain work that preserves you he said I lay me down and I slept I wait for the Lord sustained me Hallelujah. If you were alive in the days of Noah, whether you were an economic guru, whether you understood principles of finances, whoever was not in the ark, no matter how economically stable you were, no matter how valuable your business or your products and services were, you would die completely. And let me tell you, according to the laws of times and seasons, there are always moments on earth where this kind of event reoccurs, where only those who know how to hide under the shelter of Jehovah are preserved. An example was COVID-19. Hallelujah. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of praying with, talking with, and ministering at a very personal level to multi-millionaires and billionaires. And I can tell you, you will think that attaining a level of wealth of that sort will translate automatically to peace and joy and rest. It is a joke. You do not want to know the problems. There are many multi-millionaires in dollars who will give up their money to find peace will give up their money to find joy, will give up their money to deal with that which is plaguing their health. 
it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow medical doctors here present and across the world will tell you that most of their clients are not poor people how much do they have to visit the hospital regularly the kind of wealth that the more your wealth grows the more your BP2 grows the more your wealth grows the more you are you're suspecting everybody including your wife and your husband you become a millionaire you transfer yourself to one room alone you become a billionaire you move to one house alone what kind of life is that so when God wants to prosper us don't carry brain work and economy and say leave all that Christian talk the person talking to you is not stupid I understand economic principles he says I Daniel understood by books but I can tell you there is a way there is a superior dimension to accessing the blessings of God and find rest in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my rapture soul shall I rest beyond the river. Let's sit down. Hallelujah. You can have money and believe that is all it takes. And one thing can happen to your business and reduce you break your pride like it has happened to many people who have laughed at God find out what happened to remember the story of the rich man in the Bible he destroyed bands and built bigger ones and said my soul find rest listen believers let me tell you this you will never hear me downplay the place of the blessings of God the place of wealth and abundance I'm not that kind of preacher I will teach you the whole counsel of God make no mistakes about the importance and the relevance of finances in the upkeep of your life your children I understand the price of things have have for some doubled some tripled hallelujah one of my people was giving me a haircut this afternoon and he was just giving me a story of the market what goes on there and he said this and that that used to be this is now this and we're yet to step into December you know what happens already hallelujah we need to pray because it looks like the price of chicken now will soon almost become house rent <laughs> are we together Praise the name of the Lord. So don't, don't bring some kind of false humility and say, I don't need to prosper. I'm not interested. It is wickedness to reject prosperity because there are many people connected to you. When you think from a standpoint of selfishness, you don't need much to be alive and all of that. How much, this is all your stomach. This is all of you. How much do you need to eat? But when you think about those connected to you and then the program of God, You've heard me say the name of Jesus is heavy. It takes resources to lift it up. High enough for the nations to see. Koinonia, hear me tonight. God has sent me tonight to speak and declare that grace for prosperity. It must land on you tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. It must land on you tonight. I believe in prosperity I believe it is the will of God's people listen I do not believe listen please I do not believe that God's people have to live a life from hand to mouth struggling around most of the attitudes and temptations of unrighteousness come in response to lack is that true there are more people who are delving the path of compromise and unrighteousness as a result of lack than it is as a result of abundance. Very simple health situations that can be managed medically are complicated because of lack of financial resources. Look at the amount of young people right now having BP and all kinds of things. You see a young boy in his early 20s having the trouble of a man of 60 years. What are you thinking about? And he says, my father died. I'm the firstborn among seven. And six of them are idol worshippers. I'm the only one who got born again. 
you will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. is turning things around. is turning things around. is turning things around. Sing it one more time. I say prophetic word that God will prosper you. Listen, please hear me. There is wealth that comes by developing your value and exchanging it for a price. That is the standard classic way to be blessed financially. That means you package your value, you serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base. That's what you call business. There is a level of wealth that comes by reason of impacting lives. You don't sell that, you give. However, because of God's system of justice, there will always be a way that people will honor you and reward you. And because you do not sell it, your reward will not come at a fixed price. It will come based on the perception of the one you have blessed. Are we together now? But there is the third dimension of wealth that the world cannot get. It is the prophetic dimension. It's called sovereign wealth. Wealth that comes by the speakings of the prophet. It says, and by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet was he preserved. Believe in the Lord your God, he says, and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets. What is the assignment of the prophetic? To create a climate of favor above you. I hope you believe this. There is overemphasis on just the spirituality of wealth and people do not become valuable. The Bible talks about God blessing the works of your hands. But please hear me believers, make no mistakes to downplay the place of the prophetic just because you are valuable. I have taught you here, there are times like Peter where your boat is correct, yet you will not catch fish. You can be in the sea, yet you will not catch fish. You have the correct net. You are a professional fisherman. At that point, you don't need fishing. You need Jesus. Jesus said, cast your net to the right side. For some of you, you have tried. Your first prayer request right now is your business because it is not working. In as much as the value is there, the prophetic is powerful by this time tomorrow. I hope you believe what I'm saying. I made a covenant with God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant men of the word and men of prayer i believe in the power of influence i believe in god prospering people there are many unnecessary prayer requests one of my dear sons will say that financial prosperity will reduce your prayer points and increase your prayer life that means your prayer life will be reduced from give me, give me. And you can now properly pray the way your spirit desires. For most believers, our prayers are surrounded by give me, give me. One time a wealthy man came, very wealthy man came to my house with his children. And I said, everybody should say what is their concern. And the children absolutely didn't have anything to say. I'm not sure they even understood what I was saying. I said, look how unfair life can be. I'm asking these children and they're just looking around and smiling and they said, oh, nothing, maybe just general blessings. I said, oh dear. General blessings. Whereas there are people you say, what should God do? Ah. May God do it this night. I prophesy to you, may God do it this night. In the name of Jesus Christ. I hope I'm not wasting your time. Open up your heart to prosper in this wicked world. 
some of you you need to pay attention when this grace comes tonight because give your parents a chance to see the lifted you before they go to see Jesus give your loved ones a chance and then this this dirty life of hustling and going around to compromise on your faith because of tea and bread it's not enough to tell believers stop doing this stop following this and that we must introduce the grace that empowers people hallelujah look at how people run from pillar to post because of house rent by the time the lady is pushed to the wall now the devil begins to suggest all kinds of things then the devil programs a wicked man who says beautiful lady are you not in abuja don't you know are you a small girl and then she delves into a path of compromise and when believers come they do not understand the pain of lack and it's easy for people to judge i'm saying it again may god prosper you How many, how many sincere men and women of God, some of you are seated here, scattered in the congregation. You love Jesus. There is so much you want to do for the kingdom. You are not limited by revelation. You are not limited by your hunger and passion. Your limitation is resources. And the devil knows the role that resources have to play. Some of you have never been able to do anything, any, any prophetic campaign for the kingdom because of resources. You pass by children in your community every day. Some of them, they will tell you this person stopped school since January. And you pass and you just say, oh dear, I wish, I wish. May God change that I wish in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Imagine that as I came here now, I have a lot of financial needs. And then, and I can prophesy. You think I'll leave you to go free? Are we together? Imagine that I, I, I ask them to give me a bowl now. Once I speak to you, just don't even ask me any question. Just drop whatever. I, you know, all these skills that people bring. It's not that people are bad. It's what happens when there is no lack. When, when there is lack. Hallelujah. I submit to you with all humility. What it takes to run one koinonia service is what many people will run a conference with. I submit to you by God. But for as long as I'm alive and for as long as this ministry is, nobody will ever put one pressure on you financially. No. For someone maybe you came here husband and wife maybe you came here a pastor representing your ministry among the many graces you should covet is the help of God even in this area don't just covet the healing anointing signs and wonders and leave this other part believe me God can prosper you in a way that every devil knows you have been helped by God this is not about bragging and making noise if it is not there it is not there it's as simple as that hallelujah so this is the second thing that God is doing visiting the finances of God's people ending this financial captivity that has held families held so many people down especially because of what is happening across the globe right now frankly speaking there is no nation you go to that automatically guarantees financial freedom Europe, there's fight everywhere. America is there. Africa, we have our own. Nigeria, we have our own peculiar issues. So whether you run from pillar to post, it is still the help of God. And Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of God. You're a businessman here. Please open up your heart. And don't let the devil deceive you and say, I am prosperous. How much? You see, that's the problem. 
for most times when you are driven by you you are not pro kingdom in your thinking respectfully speaking how much is enough you see you don't measure enough by your personal satisfaction you measure enough by how much is required for the kingdom if God has called you to be a kingdom financier and you just rejoice over one billion or hundred million that is too small for a work how much is it to build the house of God hallelujah you know you are truly prosperous when you can give lavishly to the work of God and it does not affect you until you get there don't rest hallelujah having a car and having an estate and those these things they are wonderful i don't downplay that sacrifice but we're getting to a point where god will give men prosperity that is equal to that of nations where you can sit down in the morning in your office and you are just sharing money like a that's your work in the name of jesus this ministry this is what we are giving this one for this one this mission agency may that be your portion in the name of jesus christ hallelujah how many clothes can you buy how many foods can you eat no matter how greedy you are two or three plates is enough your body will even say you i can't take more so we're not talking about accumulating money to say my soul find rest no for some of you you are right here and if we are to check your prayer request it's still this economic thing again your children are perhaps now in tertiary institutions and sadly you see some of the things that have happened to our federal institutions i believe in the blessing of the lord i believe that it is the will of god to show men mercy may you find that grace Amen. number three what is God doing in our lives tonight? Advancement and establishment. This is the third thing that the Lord revealed to me. Please pay attention. Proverbs chapter 4, please, from verse 18 and 19. Proverbs 4, 18 and 19. But the path of Joshua Selman is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Verse 19. It says, but the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not what they, at what they stumble. So the Bible says for the wicked person, his path should get dimmer and dimmer. But for the just, that his path should be as the shining light that shines brighter and brighter. In Job chapter 8 and verse 7, a scripture that has ministered to me it ministered to me right from when God started with me he said though thy beginning was small for someone this is a prophetic word for you tonight though thy beginning was small he said yet thy later end should greatly increase that means there is no problem starting small there is no problem starting whether we small in terms of the level of grace in terms of your understanding of the word in terms of your capacity and influence but according to god's pathway for the believer increase should come with time hallelujah in job chapter 42 while meditating upon this this morning it blessed me in a, a very profound way job 42 let's start from verse 12 please Job 42 and verse 12. Watch this. The Bible says, So the Lord blessed the later end of Job more than his beginning. Go to verse 13. Let's see. I just wanted you to see that first part. It says, um, let's, let's, let's try 15. So we do 15 down to 17. It says, And in all the land, he's talking about the daughters he later had now, and their father gave them inheritance among the brethren. The later part of Job's life now, 16. We'll read down to 17. After this, Job lived 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. 17. So Job died being old and full of days. This was the later part. There is nobody on earth who has gone through what Job went through. So by that talk, you should already know that your situation is not hopeless. If you had seen Job, 
in the face of his tragedy what else is worse than losing all your sons and daughters in one day then you are plagued with your health condition you now see the wealthiest man in the east seated by the roadside with his wife can you imagine that and people would pass him and just nod their heads and say your charm has finally caught up with you god punish you and they would pass and the bible says even for such a man there is hope so what have you gone through that makes you believe that is hopeless do you know what it meant for the woman to still be alive and still give birth to daughters and sons and the bible says they were fairer and more beautiful than all the people there then god restored job twice everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost be returned unto me everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me please sit down advancement and establishment is god's will for my life is god's will for your life isaiah chapter 12 i believe i hope i got that right and verse 6 Please help me find it. It was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. It was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. I remember the day I found that scripture. It blessed me in no small way. That men do not just move forward. When you see a man moving forward, ladies and gentlemen, there is a force in the spirit. The very hand of God. Media, can you find that scripture for me? Yes, thank you. 12, 1 Samuel, my apologies, 1 Samuel 12 and verse 6. It was the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. So Moses did not just go forward. Aaron did not just go forward. Men do not just go forward. It's the Lord that advances men. In your career, in your life, may you go forward tonight. The Lord brought you here tonight to move you forward. God does not bring people to take them backward. Are you listening to me? God does not bring people, I repeat, to take them backward. He has brought you here to move you forward and I have come as a prophetic midwife. In the name of Jesus, you must go forward. In the name of Jesus, I say again, you must go forward. Hallelujah. One of the characteristics of living things, biology taught us, is movement. That when a person or a thing is alive, you test it by its ability to move. That means when a person is stagnated or stagnating, it is a sign of death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 